real-time feedback into the behavior of your distributed systems and observing changes, exceptions, errors in real time allows you to not only experiment with confidence, but respond instantly to get things working again. Hello, and thank you for watching today's session on Chaos Experiments under the lens of AI Ops. My name is Michele, I'm an SRE DevOps engineer, and I have a background in software engineering, AI, and industrial automation. So naturally, I would say all of these areas pointed me towards AI Ops, which is my current specialization. This is our agenda for today. I'm going to define the basic concepts surrounding AI Ops, followed by an in-depth view of how it can be applied to chaos engineering. I think the highlight of this session for many will be our live demo, after which we'll wrap up and summarize everything that we've talked about here today. Before we start, let's set the scene. These are our two focus concepts, AI ops, a term used to indicate the application of ML analytics to IT ops in order to, in order to prevent system degradation and failure in simple words. And then we have chaos engineering, we'll use CE abbreviation throughout this presentation, which is, as you know, all about experimenting and testing our system's resiliency. Now, imagine this. A hardworking SRE, Site Reliability Engineer, wakes up one day, thinks about all the tasks that await him. So many tools, tickets, incidents, mails, basically an avalanche of responsibilities. That sounds quite overwhelming, right? Um, I think, to be honest, all of us sometimes have a feeling like that. But then, as he sips his morning coffee, an idea comes to his mind. Why the hell should it be like that? If only there was a way to smartly and efficiently organize and automate all these tasks. Well, there is one, which is why we'll start with today. With today's rapidly increasing and more and more complex tech, systems have become extremely critical. As I mentioned, an average SRE today needs to deal with tons of errors, warnings, tickets, critical alert. It just doesn't end, doesn't it? So. How can we help our poor site reliability engineer with his daily struggles? Well, for starters, let's introduce AI Ops, Artificial Intelligence for IT Operations. But what is exactly AI Ops? How does it work? We can segment it in three areas. Observe, engage, act. To the left, we see the ingestion of historical and real-time data in the form of logs, metrics, text, into an ML model, which ultimately produces actionable insights, and that means anomaly detection, performance analysis, and so on. So in simple words, we want to predict, or even better, we want to preempt failure before it even occurs. AIOps collects all kinds of data, network, application, storage. As we said, the goal is to predict failure, identify the root cause error, and reduce alert noise. Furthermore, Autoredemiation and adaptive self healing are also important concepts, which refer to the ability to resolve a failure before its occurrence. That means to enable self healing before a problem occurs. Basically, the paradigm, if you think about it, is shifting here from reactive to predictive. We don't just collect, we don't just detect errors, we prevent them. Also remember that the AI ops model is continuously collecting data and continuously learning from it and therefore continuously optimizing itself. But let's extend our scope a bit now. How do we experiment inside AI Ops? We have our AI Ops solution, but now we want to test its resiliency, robustness, and reliability. How do we do that? Let's do the following, let's read through the following definition. A discipline of performing security experimentation on a distributed system in order to build confidence in the system's capability to withstand turbulent and malicious conditions. So, what is this? Or we, as we already know, this refers to chaos engineering, 
we want to test our AI op solution by conducting chaos experiments. Now, we need to ask ourselves, how do we plan chaos experiments? So this diagram here illustrates the continuous cycle of hypothesis and verification. What is this? We have the steady state posture, which we get through observability. Don't worry, I'll get to this concept soon. We form a hypothesis, sort of, is my system resilient to the disruption of XY services? This is an example hypothesis. We put it to the test through continuous verification, at the end of which we summarize the lesson learned and implement mitigation. This is a continuous cycle, as at this point, we start again with the whole process to further experiments our system. We talked about AI ops and C, chaos engineering. But where do these meet? There are several things, but for today's scope, the most important one is observability. Here are a couple of notions relevant for observability. We have different sources of data illustrated to the left side. And basically, observability is the ability to measure a system's current state based on the data it generates, such as logs, metrics, and traces. The so-called golden triangle of observability. While the golden triangle signals are latency, traffic, errors, and saturation. In our case, as you will soon see, latency will be the one that we will use for our upcoming live demo. So let's get started. So far, I think we learned about AI ops. We learned about CE, as well as we learned about observability. So what now? Now we can run a chaos experiment. There are two questions running on an SRE's mind. One, how does AI ops react if I run a chaos experiment? Two, is AI ops capable of recognizing a running chaos experiment through observability? Now that we have all the necessary munition to formulate our hypothesis, which goes as follows. We assume that if we run a chaos experiment, AI ops will be able to detect that there is one. The experiment will then either fail or it will be under control. These are the possibilities. Just a quick overview in terms of our architecture. Our online boutique, which is a mock-up web store composed of 11 services. Splunk Observability, a platform for end-to-end -end monitoring which monitors our boutique. Locust Load Generator, used to simulate active users in our boutique, which are navigating and clicking all over the place. And then we have Litmus Chaos, which will introduce uh, which will introduce chaos into our system, into our boutique. As we said, latency will be our target. Now, while the observability component collects data from the boutique via the open telemetry collector, as we can see, it is the AI ops component that sits on top of Splunk observability, and that component is responsible for detecting and predicting an increased latency. Well, I think we're all set now. Let's go. This is my environment. I'm running everything in Minikube. This here is my online boutique store, a cloud native microservices demo app. Um, what I want to show you quickly is um, that it consists around, as we can see here, around 10 microservices simulating a web-based e-commerce application. And it's all running inside my Minikube. Also, this is, if you're interested, the GitHub project for the boutique store. I personally find it pretty handy. So on the other hand, we have Splunk Observability, which is a platform that provides monitoring across infrastructure, apps, user interfaces. So it basically provides end-to-end -end monitoring for the entire system through its entire life cycle. Um, what we can see here is a tree view of our infrastructure um, and all of our microservices in the boutique store. Um, what we see here marked in red, um, it means that there's probably already an issue that's been detected. So what is Splunk doing here? Um, it's basically trying to identify the root cause of the issue. It starts with some issues on the front end and it tries to track it down all the way to the root cause, which is the payment service. What does that mean? It means that perhaps our users can um, browse through the catalog and put items into baskets, but might have issues while proceeding with payment. It's important to mention that the AI ops component licenses Splunk observability too which gives us the opportunity to apply AI, ML, data analysis in order to predict all sorts of events, such as failures, system degradation, and so on. Another relevant component running in our Minikube is Locust. And Locust is an open source load testing tool, which I'll use to simulate active users in my boutique. Um, I can easily just choose the amount of users I want to simulate. So in this case, 30. Spawn rate is two. 
And the moment I click start swarming, um, it will basically start simulating all of these users and into the in, into the boutique store. The last relevant component I must show you is Litmus Chaos. So this is also an open source platform. It's a chaos engineering platform that we use to introduce some chaos. So now that we've made a summary of all of our components, let's start an experiment. Um, what I want to do is I want to um, inject latency through Litmus Chaos into my card service microservice. Um, basically, I want to see if Splunk will be able to detect it. What they created here is a very simple dashboard that's just tracking the latency. Um, as you can see here, you can set also um, the time span that you want to focus on, past day, past week, past hour. And just to show you how I created the alert condition, um, how it works. So right now I specified sudden change, which as it says here is useful for indicating an unexpected increase in latency. But I could have also easily chosen historical anomaly. What this would do, we basically um, use the latency patterns from the past, if they are patterns and existing patterns, and use that in order to detect and predict if something is off or not. So I think we're ready now to start the experiment. Let me go into Litmus Chaos. So you click here on Litmus Workflows. You want to create a chaos load workflow. So you click schedule a workflow, um, select the agent. We want to create a fully new workflow, although you could in theory also use a template if you have one. Here we click add new experiment. So as you can see here, you can inject all kinds of chaos. So container kill, CPU hog, um, network loss. But what we will do right now is we want to inject network latency. Before we proceed, we need to um, tune this a bit. So I need to specify the target here, which is card service. This is the name of my microservice. We don't have any probes right now. Um, the duration of the chaotic experiment, let's say um, 200. And the network latency, let's make it 4,000 so we can detect it. Also never forget to click here in advanced options and to enable cleanup chaos. Um, this basically cleans up the chaos and restores your environment after the chaos experiment is over. Now that we've set this all up, um, we can proceed. We are scheduling it right now. Click on finish. And now let's see the workflow. So now what he's doing is setting up the chaos environment after which he will start um, injecting, injecting latency issues. So what we can see here, um, what we will see here, and maybe we can already see it actually, is that in Locust, we have all the requests that are simulated users are executing, as well as the failures here, which will increase even more after, after the chaos is injected. Okay, um, you also see here um, the percentage of failure, which is something pretty handy. Now let's go check out if our if our um, dashboard, if our Splunk observability platform detected anything. And yeah, actually, as you can see here right now, um, this is the latency dashboard. Um, we can see this red triangle already indicates that um, there was an alert. Let me quickly dig through my emails to see if I received something. Yeah, I did. Um, so as you can see here, Splunk observability critical alert. It says latency. Um, the latency in the last eight minutes is more than three deviations above the norm. So it basically um, alerted me that there has been an increase in latency. So if we look here at the graph, um, you'll notice that before we have this peak here, before we have this 
significant increase in latency, which is um, larger than anything before, we notice that the alert comes actually before the increase. So what we're using here, we're using our AI ops model to basically predict when there's something off in latency before we actually have the error. That way we can actually even prevent it. Um, in reality, we can do even more than just alerting. So let me show you the settings. If you go here to alert message, um, you can actually specify here runbook. Um, this is pretty interesting because within this runbook, you can give Splunk observability some actions to do to remediate this issue. For instance, it can um, rebuild, it can reset the node that's failing or that has issues. So this is actually what we're talking about when we're saying that we're shifting from a reactive to a predictive paradigm. So um, if you remember, we posed a question earlier. Um, and the question was, how does AI ops react if I run a chaos experiment? As we can see in this case, it detects a latency increase and promptly alerts me. So let's put a check mark on that. The other question, if you remember, we posed was, is AI ops capable of recognizing a running chaos experiment? For that, I've built another really simple dashboard. So this dashboard basically um, contains a counter for every time the specific pod is launched within the litmus snail space. And this ultimately shows me every chaos experiment that was running. So here I said in the last week, it gives me and detects every chaos experiment I ran and it also gives me a count. So in conclusion, we've proven our hypothesis as AI ops is actually capable of detecting a running chaos experiment. Okay, let's wrap everything up. We talked today about AI ops, which is necessary to preemptively predict failure and system degradation. We talked about chaos engineering, necessary to inject chaos into the system and testing its resiliency. And finally, observability. Observability provides us full transparency of the system through end-to-end -end monitoring. Now, we have tested and confirmed our hypothesis today, which claims that AI ops can leverage observability in order to identify when a chaos experiment is running. So basically, AI ops is able to detect that. We have shown this today with our live demo. Furthermore, through this continuous cycle of hypothesis and experimentation, trust in the system is built. And with every experiment, its reliability increases. A final takeaway I would like to point out from today's session. Start simple and scale fast. So you don't know where to start from. So what? Start from a simple experiment. See how it goes, see how the system reacts. And as you proceed, you can scale. You basically build more and more on top of that. Well, it's since it's time to close the curtains. Thank you for watching this talk and I hope you got something out of it. Until next time, cheers.